okay, dear friends. So we have the very important topic about the qualitative properties. So this topic is related to the, our solution. Okay, you know the solution is the okay. A uh, mixture of the two components, solute and solvent. Yes, we know. Now here, okay. So what the properties of the solution we discuss here? That is the vapor pressure, okay, boiling point, freezing point, and osmosis also. Now here, okay, the colloid properties in terms of the vapor pressure. That is the okay relative lowering. Of vapor pressure so relative lowering of vapor pressure is a collective properties right then number two so the collective properties okay related to the boiling point that is the elevation of Point okay. The third one is the quality properties related to the freezing point that is the depression of freezing point. Right. The last one, the fourth one, is the quality property. Okay, related to the osmosis, that is what we call osmotic pressure. So there are four colligative properties in our solution. Number one is the relative lowering of vapor pressure. Number two is the elevation of boiling point. The third is the depression of freezing point. And the last one, the fourth one is the osmotic pressure. These four are the okay, quality properties. Quality properties means okay, the properties of the solution, right? Now here, what do you mean by the lowering vapor pressure? So let me just discuss one by one here. Now here, vapor pressure. So you remember, okay. Vapor pressure is the properties of the liquid. Okay, what type of the properties of the liquid? That is the scattering tendency of a liquid into a vapor phases, right? So different liquids, you know, different vapor pressure. So that means different scattering tendency. Some of the liquids very high okay, scattering tendency. We consider as the high vapor pressure, and some of the liquid having the low vapor pressure. That means okay low scattering tendency here right so that vapor pressure of the liquid in what factors that depends on now factors factor on what factors the vapor pressure of the liquids depend so the most important so we have a number of the factors so we can mention the nature of the liquid and uh, temperature but all of these two so one of the, the most important factors is the okay amount of okay solute we added right okay now here so what okay affect on the vapor pressure okay on addition of amount of the solute added right on addition of the some amount of the your solute okay we added right so naturally we know okay in the our liquid when we add uh, some okay non-volatile or volatile solute when we add into it so the okay solvent molecules okay that means in our liquid present that solvent solvent molecule is okay uh, on the surface of the liquid so the solute okay uh, particle or solid molecules they Okay, occupy so because of that because of that when we add uh, some amount of the solute the vapor pressure of the liquids 
in our immense resolution. So I write here the preparation. The vapor pressure of liquid. Okay, so that when the vapor pressure of the liquid means the liquid when we have the vapor pressure, the vapor pressure of the liquid so it's always reduced. Or it can say lower. So that means when we add the case some amount of the solute into the liquid, the vapor pressure of the liquid automatically reduce okay or lowering okay don't forget okay. now here how much lowering of the case okay, so how much lowering of the pressure it can depends on the okay so the amount of the solute we added right more amount of the solute we added so more lowering of the our case solution that means just I write here. So you please remember this. Remember this. That means vapor pressure of the our case solution after we mix the case solute and solvent. That is I write P S the symbol we can write. So the vapor pressure of the solution okay, is always lower than the vapor pressure of the pure solvent what we just take it here that is I write a P note now here so that means the vapor pressure of the solution is always lower than the vapor pressure of the solvent say for example you know okay water so this is the pure water no the vapor pressure of the, this pure water Okay, in okay, atmosphere that is 760 millimeter of the mercury or you can say 760 atmosphere right so now in that water when you mix some amount of the our solute okay that is the solution what is the solution we call aqua solution right that aqua solution is normally so I write the vapor pressure of that solution is always lower than the vapor pressure of the our pure solvent water. Right. Don't forget. Now here, how much lowering? So we can calculate that K we can say the K vapor pressure of the pure solvent is always higher than the vapor pressure of the solution. The difference between the difference between the vapor pressure of the pure killed solvent and the vapor pressure of the solution that is what we call the lowering of the pressure I write this is the lowering of the pressure okay how much lowering of vapor pressure if you know that okay so we can calculate the vapor pressure of the solution suppose the solution okay the vapor pressure of the solution is lowering by the k okay, 2 percent or 20 percent something like that right that means this delta k is equal to 2. So if I consider the percentage now, so now here I consider here the vapor pressure of the pure solvent is I just take it here 100, right? So that means the lowering vapor pressure is here 2 because it's 2 percent lowering, you know. Then now here, so this is the percentile is given here. This percentile we just consider it as the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. Okay, now here, if you know the vapor pressure of the pure solvent, if you know the how much the vapor pressure is lowering, so how can we calculate this P? That is, I just we can calculate now here that it is the P S is equal to K P naught minus delta Q. That means 100 minus 2. That means by how much that here minus P S is the vapor pressure of the solution here. Okay, now. The lowering of vapor pressure that means delta P. So here, this lowering of vapor pressure, lowering of vapor pressure, no, is okay, depends on the okay amount of the solute we added, how much amount of the solute we added. That means I write here directly proportional to the amount of solute we add. So this amount of solute we have can we can express in terms of the mass. Okay, we can express in terms of the mass. 
attendance in the gram, how much gram of the hours sort of we added here, more amount of the sort of we added, that is more lowering, right? So it can be expressed in terms of the mass. Then this amount of the solar we can express in terms of the mole, right? More number of the moles we added, so more lowering, right? Understand? Then number three. So this amount of solar we also get expressed in terms of the mole fraction. Mole fraction. Okay. Then lastly, just I just mentioned here, this lowering of the population is also directly proportional to the amount of the solid in terms of the concentration. Concentration here. Yeah. So you know the concentration is always related to the solution, right? Okay, what is the concentration means? Okay, so that concentration of solution we always express in different terminology terms, right? Now here, this lowering of the pressure, okay, is always depends on the one of the particular concentration term that is the molarity. Molarity, you know. Don't forget. So I write this molarity, I write here M. Now, now I conclude here one more. So lowering of the pressure is directly proportional to the amount of the solute we added. How much amount of the solute we added in terms of the mass? It may be in gram, in terms of the mole, in terms of the mole, that means how many number of the mole. Or in terms of the mole fraction, how much the fraction of the mole we added uh, in terms of the concentration, right? So, what concentration term this lowering of the pressure should depend? That is the molarity. Okay, so molarity. So, we have the other okay, concentration terms I mentioned here. That is the molarity also, normality also, and okay, uh, some other concentration here also. Now, mass percentage, volume percentage, so and so. But now, we are particularly I mentioned that is that depends on the molarity, right? Molarity. What do you mean by molarity? You know, molarity. You know, molarity is the concentration of the solution. You know, concentration of the solution. So, that concentration of the solution, okay, we define here, here. So, we know the number of the moles here, right? That's right, the number of the moles. That number of the moles of the solute is present in 1 kg of the solvent. I write 1 kg. So this is the mass of the solvent here, right? So in one kg of the solvent, so how many number of the moles present in that solution? That is what we call molarity, right? Okay, so don't forget now here that means, so I just write a conclusion here. So relative lowering per pressure as a part of our quality property, you know. So relative lowering for lowering of uh, relative lowering of the population is a quality properties, right? What type of quality property that is? So I write this is the lowering of the population and divided by the population of the pure solvent. That is what we call relative lowering of the population. Now, as we write here, okay, amount of the solvent dependent. So this amount, so I write the last one that is molarity. So this directly proportional to the molarity. Right? So for the final equations we found here, right? Relative lowering of the pressure is equal to, so now I write here is small m is the molarity multiplied by the molecular mass of the our solvent divided by C. When we do calculate in terms of the molarity, so what is the amount of the solvent? What is the mass of the solvent? That is the one kg. So when we do the calculate in the 1 kg, so this should be the gram and here is the 1 kg. So let we okay, make the equal unit, so we divide it by 1000. No. So this is our equation here. So when we calculate here, if we know the okay, uh, molarity and if we know the molecular, molecular mass of the solvent, we can calculate the relative lowering of the pressure here. Now here. So this became the pressure of the pure solvent is no doubt, no problem. So this molecular mass of the solvent is no problem. That's not any such a problem here. So that means relative I mean, lowering of the population is directly proportional to the molarity, right? 
That means this delta B is directly proportional to the A, right? So that means when A, that means molarity, okay, increase and decrease, this scale lower in the proportion mm -hmm. to be changing, right? Yes, no, I just mentioned that, no, this lowering of the proportion is directly depends on the molality. Say, suppose when the molality change, this lowering of the proportion also changing, right? Say, suppose I write, okay, this molality is now, now it becomes double. Suppose I write a double, okay, when the molality of the other solution becomes double, what will be the effect of this, right? So, lowering of vapor pressure also double times lowering, right? Double times, suppose it was the one now. So, how much will be lowering now? So, it should be lowering double times, right? That means two times will be lowering, right? Say, suppose this was the our scale vapor pressure, vapor pressure, and now here this is the okay, our concentration molarity now. So, when our concentration scale increase, that I write it increase, no? How much increase? Double times, right? Double times. So this is the lowering of the proportion. It's already mentioned here. Now here, when the molarity of the our solution becomes double time, right? Increase. So this lowering of the proportion should be lowering double times lowering like this, right? So this is the our relation between the lowering of the evaporation and molarity. Okay, don't forget. Now here, as I mentioned here, so evaporation of the our okay, liquid or solution is very important. Okay, in our chemistry, in our properties of the solution, right? That means the evaporation of the our liquids play a very important role in other properties of the liquids here. So, what is the relation between the evaporation and the boiling point? No. So, boiling point, you know the boiling point is the temperature. Okay, okay, what type of temperature? See, in our liquids, the most important property is evaporation. No, see, I make here, this is the liquid. This is the liquid. Now, here is the vapor pressure, right? So, this vapor trying to keep just trying to escape as the vapor freeze, right? So at the room temperature, no, I mentioned at the room temperature, at the room temperature, some of the liquids are remain as the liquids, okay? Very less, I mean, the possibility to come out as a vapor freeze. Say, for example, the uh, liquid water, no? But other liquids like the ethyl alcohol, no, at the room temperature, they have a very high tendency, high escaping tendency to escape as a vapor phase. No. Now here at the room temperature, then okay, I just take the water. So the vapor pressure I already mentioned to you 760 okay, milliliter of the HG mercury. Now here. So that vapor, so scaping tendency of the water, scaping tendency of the liquid into the vapor phase. So it's blocked by the another excellent pressure. So this is the vapor okay, pressure, that means the arm pressure of the liquid, so scaping tendency. So liquid are always trying to escape as a vapor. So opposite to the data vapor pressure, the another pressure is exerted, exerted okay, to the liquid itself. So that would okay, give pressure what we call the atmospheric pressure. No. So here is the two pressure, one is the vapor pressure, another is the atmospheric pressure. No, I write here is the vapor pressure, another is the atmospheric pressure. This is the pressure exerted by the atmosphere, this is the pressure exerted by the liquid. No. So now here, so in order to bring the vapor pressure of the liquid, okay, at equilibrium with the vapor, I mean atmospheric pressure, I write this equilibrium. So at the room temperature, at the room temperature, atmospheric pressure is more than vapor pressure normally, no? You just remember that at the room temperature, our atmospheric pressure is higher than the vapor pressure of the liquid itself. So in order to bring this vapor pressure, okay, equal to the atmospheric pressure, we require temperature. We require temperature, no? So 
that temperature what we call as boiling point, right? Okay. So boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure or density okay and the atmospheric pressure okay attained at equilibrium state. That is what we call the boiling point of the liquid. No, no. So here what is the relation between the vapor pressure and the boiling point here? So in different solutions, you know the solution, the vapor pressure okay is always lowering, not lowering, right? So if the vapor pressure is okay getting lower, I mean the vapor pressure of the solution getting lower, so obviously the boiling point that means okay the temperature required to bring the at a state of equilibrium with the atmospheric pressure it will be okay, more heat or more temperature required that means okay so lowering the vapor pressure okay more temperature required that means higher is the vapor required right so that is the our relation between the our heat boiling point and vapor pressure so that means the vapor pressure okay of the solution is getting lower the boiling point of the solution will be higher that means higher in the boiling point of the solution that is what we call elevation of the boiling point now here elevation of boiling point now here elevation of boiling point and I need to think sort of BP that is the boiling point now so here in the simple language what do you mean by the elevation elevation means increasing okay that means elevate means increasing okay so here we understand that okay the boiling point of the solution so boiling point of the our solution i write here ts okay is always higher than okay boiling point of the our pure solution so the boiling point of the pure solvent is always less than the boiling point of the solution. Always the boiling point of the solution is higher than the boiling point of the pure solvent. That means this I write P0. So that means Ps is always greater than, I mean higher than P0, right? So here will be the difference. Here will be the difference between the boiling point of the pure solvent and boiling point of the solution. Understand? So the difference between the boiling point of the solution and the boiling point of the pure solvent that I write. So Ts minus P0, that is how much the boiling point is different. So that much difference what we call the elevation. So here I write, this is what we call elevation of boiling point. Now I write here that the TV is the elevation of the boiling point here. So now here, what? is the elevation of boiling point the simple answer is this is the quality properties why this elevation of the boiling point is a quality property so that we come back to the our lowering of the top pressure as we know lowering of the top pressure is always depends on the one concentration term is monality so if the Okay, properties of the our solution that is the vapor pressure okay depending on the okay number of the moles amount of the solute mole fraction or the concentration terms in okay i mean the concentration in terms of the molality that type of the properties of the solution we call quality properties here now here similarly okay this elevation of boiling point is also a quality property that means this quality property that the TV is also directly proportional to the one of the concentration what a concentration is same with the previous one that means okay lowering the pressure here also concentration that is in terms of the molality now here so in the Okay, these two quality properties lowering the vapor pressure and the elevation of boiling point. So what concentration term? So these two are depending on that the molality, you know? Right.
Now here, what is the relation between the okay, lowering of the pressure and the elevation of the boiling point? Here, so lowering of the pressure is directly proportional to the elevation of the boiling point, right? That means more lowering, more elevation. Understand? That means more lowering, so the elevation of boiling point also be more elevated. That means in the vapor pressure of the solutions, okay? If the vapor pressure of the solution is more lowering, that solution, the boiling point of that solution will be more, more higher, okay? So here I write the solution, here one, solution one, solution two, right? So here, solution one. So what is the vapor pressure of this, this solution one? Let me say 750. What is the vapor pressure of this solution two? Let me say 740. So this is the more lowering from the our okay, solvent. That is solution two is more lowering than the solution one, right? So if you know the vapor pressure of this solution, of, I mean the vapor pressure of the different solution, which one is the more lowering, which one is the more okay, less lowering. So this vapor pressure of the solution two is more lowering than the vapor pressure of the solution one, right? Then if we know that, so which one of the solution will be the higher boiling point here? The boiling point of the solution two, the boiling point of the solution one, which will be the highest one? So definitely, so the boiling point of the solution two, that will be the boiling point of the solution one. That means, that means the lowering of the pressure, the lowering of the pressure okay, is directly proportional to the elevation of the boiling point. That means more lowering, more elevation. Is it clear? Right. Now here, this elevation of boiling point is also depends on the molarity. So elevation of the boiling point depends on the number of the moles of the solute dissolved in one kg of the solvent. That means what do you mean by molarity means? Molarity means the concentration of the solution. What type of the concentration of the solution? That is number of the moles of the solute dissolved in one kg of the solvent. That means the elevation of boiling point is always depends on the number of the moles of the solute dissolved in the one kg of the solvent. Okay, not a depends on the nature of the solvents. We took it here, right? Understand? Now here, this K relation. See here, K delta K is K directly proportional to the I write M now here. So what is the relation between these two? See when the molarity increase, I just write molarity. That means increase. I write increase. When the molarity increase or decrease, this elevation of boiling point also increase and decrease, right? That means it's directly proportional. So when the molarity increase, so elevation of the boiling point also be increased. When the molarity decrease, the elevation of the boiling point also be decreased. How much decrease, how much increase, that is depends on the how much molarity increase and decrease. Say suppose if the K elevation of the boiling point is 1, the molarity is 1, so when the molarity increase 2, the elevation of the boiling point also be 2. If the molarity is becoming a half, so it will be decreased by a half, right? That is the relation between the, okay? So, uh, K elevation of the boiling point and the molarity, right? Now here, when this proportion of the sign is going to move, Remember, so elevation of the boiling point, so how much elevated and uh, how much K elevated our boiling point, it depends on the molarity. Now, this molarity, the K elevation of boiling point, I just write this is equal to, <coughs> I put a 
one of the constant that is the kV. What is the kV? So this is the constant. So what is the name of this constant? What we call? So I write here the evolution of the constant. So is the one of the methods we determine the k uh, boiling point of the solution, how much it is it is. So one of the methods is that is evoloscopic method. So by that method, so here we just we have the one of the constant that is the evoloscopic constant. So this evolioscopic constant we sometimes we call molar because the our concentration is the molar origin. So molar elevation constant. Molar elevation constant. Now here, what is the important role of this molar elevation constant? You remember that this molar elevation constant. So it does not depend on this. Okay, I mean this molar elevation constant is independent of the concentration, not depends on. Con. So this molar elevation constant is only depends on. It always depends on. Okay, the nature of the solvent. Nature of the solvent. I repeat it here. This molar elevation constant. Okay, the the molar elevation constant of the different okay, solvent are different. Okay, say okay, the molar elevation constant of the water, the molar elevation constant for the benzene. Okay, for the other liquids, so that values are different. Some are very high, some are very less. Now, okay, this KV, I should say, molar elevation constant value, okay, depends on the nature of the solvent, what type of the solvent we are using in that, okay, okay. Now, this molar elevation constant does not depend on, does not depend on the Okay, this concentration. When the concentration change, so this KV does not change anything, right? Okay. Now remember that. So how far can be related? Okay, between the or lowering of vapor pressure, lowering of vapor pressure, and the elevation of boiling point. See, I have a little equation. See, this is the lowering of vapor pressure and divided by the vapor pressure of the pure solvent that is what we call relative lowering of vapor pressure as we know this is the quality property this quality property directly depends on the okay number of the okay moles result in the one kg of the solvent that is the molarity multiplied by the okay what will be written here that is the molar mass of the solvent and divided by one thousand right now here if we are going to find out this thing okay we find out the thing here m is equal to cross multiply that is delta p into 1000 divided by p naught multiplied by the m of the solvent so suppose here i write this thing molarity because this molarity is coming with the elevation of the boiling point you know elevation of the boiling point here is delta pv is equal to kv into m now this m value can be substituted here now it's very easy that kv too so 1000 now instead of writing 1000 i write delta p into 1000 divided by p naught into m of the balance molecular mass of the solvent so this is the relation between the okay lowering of vapor pressure and elevation of the boiling point. You remember this equation. See here. What are the different parameters? So this KV value of the, our solvent using will be given to you. And how much lower in the pressure is given here. So it can be put here. The pressure of the our solution, our solvent is given here. Molecular mass of the solvent, what the solvent is given. Suppose this is the water. Then if this solvent is the water, what is the molecular mass? It's eighteen. So we can find out the elevation of the boiling point. If we know the elevation of the boiling point, if we know the elevation of the boiling point, 
the elevation of the boiling point. So we can calculate the boiling point of the solution. How do we calculate the boiling point of the solution? Because elevation of the boiling point is the difference between the boiling point of the solution minus boiling point of the our solvent. Right. So this is it. Because boiling point of the our solvent for the non-solvent like the water. So I think no question for you. So boiling point of the our water is 100 degrees Celsius. Then so if the elevation of the boiling point we know, so we can just calculate here. Understand? Now here. So regarding this from the relation between the our lower water pressure and elevation of the boiling point. So I just write one simple question here. So let me think how do we calculate here question. 8 100 degrees Celsius the vapor pressure of the solution vapor pressure of the solution rate of how much 6.5 gram of a solute so this is the amount of the solute in a gram so in how much is here? 100 gram of water. So what is the sum in here? Water, you know, that. How much the vapor pressure of the solution is? That is 732 kg millimeter. If okay, kV value is given for water, how much kV value is given here? 0 0.52. So the boiling point of the boiling point of the solution we are going to find out here so I give you the option here number A how much is given here 101 degree Celsius number B how much 100 degree Celsius number C I give you here 102 degree Celsius then number D what will be the 103 degree Celsius right so these are the options. So how do we find the answer very quickly? So now here we have to get, have some logic here. See now here. This is the our solvent. What is the solvent here? Water. Normally the boiling point of the water. So boiling point of the pure solvent that is the water. What is the boiling point of the pure water? That is the 100 degrees Celsius. Very easy to remember now. So as we know that K, when we add the some amount of the solute, right? When we add the some amount of the solute, the vapor pressure of this solution is now becoming a lower. So what is the vapor pressure of the our K? Pure water. I write pure water. So if the vapor pressure of the solution here, vapor pressure of the solution here is given 732 K millimeter. Then in the your question, the vapor pressure of the our solution is given nearby 700 something like that. Now, if the vapor pressure of the solution is given in K nearby 700 like, so the vapor pressure of the pure water is suppose the vapor pressure of the K or K or solvent is the water. So the vapor pressure of the pure water it doesn't give in your equation. So so you have to think, you have to remember that. So since the vapor pressure of the solution is given near by 700, so the vapor pressure of the pure our water should be 760 millimeter. Even though they don't give it, you please remember that. Now, now here, we know the vapor pressure of, see here, the vapor pressure of the pure water is supposed, I mean, it should be the 760. Now vapor pressure of the solution is now becoming a low order. No. If the vapor pressure is lowering, so what should be the boiling point of the solution? It should be elevated. That means the boiling point of the water is 100 degrees Celsius. Now options are given here. See, option number B, 100 degrees Celsius. See, it should not be never. It should not be, okay, 100 degrees Celsius. Because, so the boiling point of the solution, it should be higher than 100 degrees Celsius. So this answer should not be correct. So here is the three option. Here, this is the more than 100, 101. Here is 102, here is 103. So 
we have the our possible answer this also this also this also because the boiling point of the solution is now kinetic one to ten it can be one it can be zero one zero two it can be one zero three but how do we find out the very quickly here number one so first we have to find out the k molar because what is the relation C? One is the vapor pressure. What is the our quality properties related to vapor pressure? That is the relative lowering of the vapor pressure. And another is the boiling point. What is the another name of the quality property related to boiling point? That is the elevation of boiling point. What is the relation between these two? I already write here that is delta EV is equal to KV into delta EV or delta V into what is it? 1000 divided by what is it? A naught into what should be we write it? M solving. Is it right? So now here see we don't know the what is the delta T V and what is the A naught here? See here without calculation you know delta V delta V no here is delta V how much here 730 that is the delta V delta V is equal to how much here that is the V P naught minus T F here how much P naught that is the 760 how much this is the 732 okay then what's the different here that is the 760 minus 732 that is now 8 and how much this is that okay 6 minus 4 that is the 2 that is 28 here okay so this will be the 28 and how much this will be this will be the okay 760 and how much this will be this will be the item and how much this will be this will be 0 0.52 so we can find delta TV right so here after we calculate this delta TV so we can get some value of delta TV after we do calculate so after we calculate this delta TV so we can have the another equation that is TS minus T0 what is the TS so we are going to calculate now T0 plus delta TV we have a delta TV value after we calculate we will find here we put it here and delta T0 I mean T0 is 100 plus something value here maybe the K1 maybe 2 maybe 3 so that answer will be the option A or B or C or this and that right so we have so this is the one of the approach because we know the relation between the elevation the boiling point and the volume of the pressure. One more option is here, right? What is the another option? Is see here, we know the delta P divided by P naught is equal to M into M solving divided by one thousand. Okay, one of the approach. So another quality properties is the elevation of the boiling point that is the delta T V is equal to K V into A. Right? So now here see this delta T V from this we can calculate this M because so if we know this one, so if we know this one, so how do we calculate M? Now here, so when we do the calculate M, so from the given here this is the value and this is the okay, what is the value here then this is the what is the value here delta tv that will be given here 760 minus 732 divided by 760 is equal to m what is this value that is the item another 1000 so this is another way right or another option is that so if we calculate m we can put it here then the kv will be here what is given here kv will be given here we can put and then after that we can calculate delta tv so this is another approach and one more approach here what is the one more approach here so if we calculate m value from the given okay okay data what are the values here see m what is it w divided by m into w solving 
and this is the solute and this is the our solute. The big problem is here. See, no. What is the type of the solute is given? So we don't. What is the molecular? This is the M solute. This is the M solute here. So if this M solute, what is the M solute? This is the molecular mass of the solute. See here in the question, the molecular mass of the solute is not given here. If we don't know the molecular mass of the solute here, so W solute is okay, it's fine, 6.5 gram. Then W solvent is fine, 100 gram, it's okay. Then without knowing the molecular mass of the our solute, how we could calculate this M? So this, if we can calculate this value M from the above data, so we can put a directly data to this put the KV into M. So if we know the KV value, if we know the M value, we can count the delta KV, then ultimately we can find the delta KV is equal to Ks minus T0. So that's it. But here we cannot apply this M using this formula because we don't know the molecular mass of the shell. Therefore, the previous two approaches, one of the approaches, you can choose it. This can be the most convenient to you. Do it and find yourself what is the your answer. Okay, now. Next. Okay, the colloidal properties in terms of the freezing point. That means colloidal properties in okay, related to the our freezing point is depression. Depression of freezing point. Right? Okay? So we know the freezing point. We know. What is the freezing point? That is the temperature. Okay? What type of the temperature it is? See, in our okay, uh, solution, so there is the conversion. Okay? In our liquid also, there is the conversion. One conversion is from the liquid to Okay, vapor phase. The liquid change into the vapor, that is what we call the term, that is the boils, right? Okay, so now here is the another one, is the liquid change into the solid, right? Okay, liquid change into the solid, you know, that means that is called a freeze, right? So in order to change from the liquid into the solid, so there will be the temperature, right? So, what type of the temperature it should be, right? See, as you know, in the, our refrigerator, so we keep the water inside it, and so when will be the our liquid water is becoming the solid? No. So, when the temperature comes down, that means the refrigerator is not an oven like that. No. So, refrigerator is the lowering the temperature inside the, our refrigerator. No. That means. So the okay liquid okay converted into the solid. So we require the temperature for the conversion of the liquid into the solid. Now here, as I said before, vapor pressure is the very important properties of the liquid. See in our okay liquid, okay the vapor pressure is here. So when the liquid change into the our okay, solution, right? Obviously, vapor pressure is definitely lowering, definitely lowering. So when the vapor pressure becomes more lowering, you know, so more temperature is required to change into the liquid. But lesser temperature required, lesser temperature required to convert it into the liquid, into the liquid, into the solid. That means, so freeze. Freeze means liquid change into the solid number one we know, right? So in order to convert the liquid change into the solid, what about temperature? Temperature should be decrease. Understand? Temperature should be decrease. Clear? Then now when the liquid change into the liquid, we are just tends to the change into the solid from the liquid stage. So we know the vapor pressure of the liquid, 
when the vapor pressure of the liquids keep so getting the more lowering getting the more lowering once the solution form okay solution form right so that solution it should be changed into the i mean that solution change into the solution obviously more lowering it must be more temperature required i mean lesser temperature required it change into the liquid into the solid here that means the more lowering lesser temperature required to freeze the our okay solution that lowering of the temperature in order to freeze the our liquid or solution that thing is what we call depression depression means lowering i should repeat again here so freeze means the conversion of the liquid into the solid right in order to come convert it from the liquid into the solid what is the importance of the temperature that purchase should be decrease right so how much will decrease the our temperature that means our solution okay when we have a solution the vapor pressure of the solution is always lowering okay more lowering more temperature i mean more lowering okay so lesser temperature is required understand lesser temperature that means so here the liquid converted to solid temperature should be decreased so that is that the solid i mean then to the in solution now it is becoming lowering the vapor pressure and that pressure so if the temperature increase this vapor pressure will be increased right obviously the vapor pressure will increase when the temperature increase so it will be difficult to liquid change into the solid therefore in order to convert it into the solid the temperature should be get lowering that lowering of the temperature we call the depression of freezing point understand now here okay so from that idea what we can come to that freezing point of our solution Freezing point of solution I write again here T S is always lower than freezing point of our pure solvent. Then I write T zero. Now here, so that means K T S is always lower than T zero. Here I write T S is the freezing point of the solution. T zero is the here is the K freezing point of the pure solvent. Now. See how much lowering. So since this one is higher than this one, so I write the difference of these two. So I write T zero minus T S. That's the difference. Okay. So how much lowering? How much depress our freezing point? That is what we call depression of the freezing point. So this is the our okay simple method to then calculate the freezing point of the solution. See how much depression? How much depression of the solution? How much? Our freezing point of the solution reduce. If we know, say, suppose two degree, this must decrease and decrease from the water. Say, suppose water. You know, pure solvent is the water. Suppose our pure solvent is the water. What is the freezing point of the water? Normally, we know zero degree Celsius. If we know the zero degree Celsius for the water, so how much the our freezing point of the solution is now in two degree? Now here, freezing point of the our water is zero degree. What is the freezing point of the our solution? Here, it's very easy. That E S is equal to how much will be minus two degrees Celsius. This is the our freezing point of the solution. Understand? Now, freezing point. Here, this is the quality property. What is the quality property related to the freezing point? That is the depression. Depression of freezing. Why depression or freezing point is a quality property? Because it depends on the okay amount of the solute. Okay, this amount of the solute we express in different okay terms. It can be expressed in the mass in the gram, or it can be expressed in number of the mole, or it can be expressed in the mole fraction, or it can be expressed in terms of the concentration. 
What concentration from we express our depression to the freezing point? That is the molarity. Here also molarity. So the previous two also related to molarity. So this third one also related to the molarity. Now, so depression of the freezing point, I have depression of freezing point is directly proportional to the molarity. Why the molarity change? Depression of the freezing point also change. That means when the molarity increase, more depression, right? See, suppose when the molarity become double, double, that means the concentration of the our solutions become okay, double times increase. That means okay, molarity of the solution become double. How much depression of the freezing point? That means double times depressed. Understand? That is the our relation between the depression of the freezing point and the molarity, right? Now here. So this k proportionality sign I write here again. Okay? This I write here. Okay? Now we have kf. This is the molarity. Now we are write this small m. We write no. So what is the kf? As we know, this is the constraint. No. So what type of methods we determine the depression of the our okay freezing point? That is what called cryoscopic method. What is the name of the method? That is, I write, cryoscopic method. So, by using this method, we just determine the okay, depression of the our freezing point. Therefore, this constant KF is just come from the our method cryoscopic. Therefore, this constant what we call cryoscopic constant, cryoscopic. And now, in the very simple language, what we say that this cryoscopic constant we call molar depression constant. Molar depression constant. Okay. Now, similar with the, our molar elevation constant, this molar depression constant also independent of the concentration. No dependence, right? So whenever, whatever the our molarity change, this Kf value is never changing. But this molarity change, this depression of the our okay, freezing point also is change. When the Kf value change, nothing change, nothing change. It's independent on the molar concentration and depression of the freezing point. But here, this Kf value it depends on so it depends on the nature of solvent. Remember, when the solvent is different, the Kf value also be different. That means Kf value for the water, Kf value for benzene, Kf value for cyclohexane, Kf value for the other carbon tetrachloride. So these all these Kf value are different. Okay, whether it may be smaller, whether it may be the higher, it depends on the nature of the solvent. Understand? Now here, okay, if we now have our okay, relation, if delta Tf is equal to Kf into M, see here, in our previous two also, we have the very common term, that is the concentration. What is the most common, I mean the common term in our, okay, the, the first three, our collective property is molar. Here I write delta Kb, so I write Kb, and now here I write the lower molecular pressure is equal to m into k. This is the molecular mass of the solvent divided by one thousand. So this three. So here, what is the common here? This also common. This also common. This also common. So from the given k lower molecular pressure, we can calculate it. K elevation of the boiling point from the given okay elevation of boiling point so we can calculate the depression okay because these three are okay are closely related to each other now okay so I compare these two very simple so I just find out this m from this one m is equal to 40 that is delta T divided by kb can I put this two here no so that means delta T is equal to Kf into that is delta T B divided by K. 
So this K M and K K B value R depends on the natural solvent. Understand? This value will be given to you, no doubt. Don't worry. This K B F K F and K B value will be given to you. So now here, this delta P B is the related to the boiling point. So if the boiling point of the solution is given, if the boiling point of the solution is given, so we can calculate the freezing point of the our solution. Very easy because the boiling point of the our solution we can calculate in here. That means T S minus T zero. Now here, the boiling point of the our solutions we know. What is the type of the solvents given? Suppose water. No question. What is the boiling point of the water? We know. So if the boiling point of the solutions we know. So if the boiling point of the solution we know. If the boiling point of the solution solvent also we know. We can calculate delta T. If delta T is we know, we can put here, right? Then we can have the KB value. KB value will be given to your equation. Then obviously we can calculate the delta T F. If the delta T F we know, so we can calculate our okay freezing point of the solution because for the water or for the other solvent, their freezing point will be given to you. Understand? Now here. This is the our relation. On other hand, on other hand, so if our K okay, boiling point of the solution is no, so we can calculate this M. If we know the M value from this delta T V is equal to K B into M. If we know this M, we can put it here delta T F is equal to K B then K F M. So we can put this M value here. We can calculate this. This is the another half of the can do. But in the very quickest method, so this is the relation we can find very easily how these two are related. Understand? No? Don't forget. But now one more thing we should remember here. That is, see KV value and KF value. As I said before, these values are depend on the nature of the soil. So in our solution, when we determine their boiling point, when we determine the vapor pressure, when we determine the freezing point, you know. So the solute and the solvent, these two components should not be interact with each other, right? That means the so solvent should be remain as solvent, solute will be remain solute, right? Okay. So when we choose the solvent, when we choose the solvent right that solvent okay so it should be less chances to interact with our solvent when we choose the solvent that solvent should be less chances to be interact with our solvent right number one then number two that solvent okay so it should be okay, very less chances to the okay changes from the one phase to another phase that means from the liquid to vapor or from liquid to solid, right? That should be the, our best solvent for our foreign property. So how to know that solvent is the best solvent for our foreign property? From their KB and KM value. Now here in the table, so KB value and KM value are listed in your books, right? So you can find out which KB value is the highest, which KB value is the lowest. So it's a very easy one. Is that greater than this value, greater than KB value and KF value, that solvent it should be we choose as the better solvent. Say for example, I just tell you the water. When I just compare to the cyclohexene. This KR value, this KR value is I think 0 0.1.8 uh, something, 1.86 something. But here it should be the 20 something in there. Very okay. I mean the highest value of the KR value than the water. So therefore, cyclohexene we choose it as the better solvent compared to the water. Because this value is higher. Understand? Because less chances for the interaction. Okay. So then. Very less chances to convert it from the one phase to another 
Okay. So my simple conclusion is that when we find the better solvent, so you have to see that which solvent is the highest KV or KF values. Understand? Then now our last quality property is osmosis. is related that is the osmosis you know osmosis is the spontaneous process this is a natural phenomenon okay what type of this natural phenomenon what type of this spontaneous okay, process here here is the flow flow of solvent the flow of the solvent molecules from which side from okay lower lower concentration to the higher concentration that's the very important logic we must remember that so here is the flow of the solvent here is the process of flow of the solvent from the lower concentration to the higher concentration just i show you here so i Okay, separated with a one small okay, partition, just I write here. Okay, this is a small partition. We have a small pores here, right? So I separate these two solutions. Here is the higher concentration. This is the lower concentration, right? Here. So what a method, what process takes place here? So from the lower concentration, from the lower concentration, the solvent molecules came. Okay, move I mean solvent molecules start to flow but when solvent molecules start to flow the solute particles should be remain there how can we block to movement of the solute so that is the one of these very specific membrane is we apply it so what is the name of that membrane what we call semi permeable membrane so through that semi permeable membrane only solvent molecules allowed to flow okay not okay, solute particles flow understand so what is the function of the semi permeable membrane semi permeable membrane what is the function is to allow flow of the solvent only not solid particles right now here this lower concentration from the lower concentration to the higher concentration in our mindset is normally we thought that it's from the higher concentration here yeah. so osmosis is the process what type of the process is the flow of the solvent from the lower concentration to the higher concentration through semi permeable membrane right now here due to the osmosis due to the osmosis okay what happens behind that is see as you know one is the concentration what concentration one is the higher concentration another is the lower concentration remember this is the lower concentration this is the higher concentration you know right as i said at the beginning you know vector pressure is the very important properties of the our k liquids here See, as comparing the vapor pressure of these two concentrations, you know, so which vapor pressure will be lower, which vapor pressure will be the higher. See here, the vapor pressure of this, vapor pressure of this higher concentration, the vapor pressure of this higher concentration, vapor pressure of this lower concentration, okay. So, which will be the higher, which will be the lower thing, always, you know. Vapor pressure of the our higher concentration means more solute, more amount of the our okay, so uh, solute present that means more concentration. More concentration once we know that more concentration of the our solution, so the vapor pressure of the our solution becoming more lower. 
therefore the vapor pressure of the higher concentration is more 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 lowering than the our vapor pressure of the our lower concentration don't forget understand now here see from the our lower concentration to the higher concentration you know so as i said before osmosis is the our spontaneous process once the osmosis started once the osmosis started solvents start to flow from the lower concentration to the higher concentration so during the our osmosis during our osmosis what happened in the concentration i said what happened in our concentration here during osmosis see we remove the solvent from here so the solvent quantity will be remain I and mean, the solvent quantity will become the lower okay once the osmosis started from the lower concentration to the higher concentration so the solvent quantity will be becoming the lowering once the solvent quantity becomes the lowering this lower concentration changes into the becoming the higher concentration understand if the lower concentration changes to the higher concentration due to the osmosis means okay due to the osmosis means the solvent quantity is becoming the lower due to the osmosis because osmosis goes to the higher concentration that means that lower concentration changes into the higher concentration that means the vapor pressure of this lower concentration it was the higher than the vapor pressure of the our okay, higher concentration so that means this vapor pressure of the our lower concentration it's already before the osmosis this vapor pressure was the higher than the vapor pressure of the higher concentration now once the osmosis started the vapor pressure of the lower concentration now goes to be lowering because the vapor pressure of the our lowering concentration it changes to the higher concentration once the solution is becoming the more and more higher the vapor pressure also more and more lowering that means here it should be lower understand but at the same time when the solvent come to here that means once the solvent reach here this concentration now it is becoming lower when the concentration is becoming more lowering so here will the vapor pressure so before the concentration lowering so the vapor pressure of the higher concentration it already okay, at the beginning it was very low very low of vapor pressure very low vapor pressure but once the osmosis started the higher concentration slowly becoming the lower concentration when the higher concentration is becoming the okay, lower concentration so at the beginning it was lower vapor pressure once lower vapor pressure i mean lower concentration the vapor pressure start to increase so that means in this side the vapor pressure is lowering in this side vapor pressure is increasing here so this is the pressure developing here here what the pressure develop lowering what the pressure develop increasing here but the question is that this higher concentrations due to the osmosis what happened in its vapor pressure the vapor pressure of this higher concentration now it comes to be rise comes to be increased that means here is the extra vapor pressure developing due to the osmosis okay due to the osmosis here an extra pressure is developed on the higher concentration side that extra pressure what we call osmotic pressure okay so that idea i think it may be very new with you but that idea is not written very clearly in your textbook so when you go to the book so i think it will be very difficult to understand but the normal definition is given here that definition i think that is not actually chemistry what should we know that so the actually chemistry what should we know that during the our osmosis the concentration will be changing 
from the lower concentration to the higher concentration due to the osmosis this lower concentration becomes the higher this higher concentration becomes the lower lower then the vapor pressure also starts changing so lower concentration vapor pressure is higher than the lower con i mean the higher than the higher concentration so since the osmosis started the vapor pressure in the lower concentration k comes down Okay, at the same time, vapor pressure on the higher concentration comes and goes up. That extra pressure vapor on the higher concentration, that extra pressure what we call osmotic pressure. Don't forget. Now, this osmotic pressure is also a collective property. Why? Now here, the thing is that okay, the volume of the solution, how much the volume of the solution we just took it. It may be lesser than, it may be higher than. So the solution, the volume of the solution, it depends. See, you know, okay, when you have the okay, one liter of the, your okay solution, one liter. When you have the okay, okay, suppose 500 ml, half of the liter. So I make a hole here. I just make a hole. I just make it hole. So the case. Okay, Okay, the speed of the liquid flow, flow since the volume of the water solution is the higher, so this water, this liquid, it can be okay, plus out very long distance. But when this volume is very less, so the movement of this okay, solvent, it should be less than half of the only distance it will be more. Because this is a 1 liter, this is a 500 ml, only this a amount is a half of this volume, therefore this liquid can be K just plus out up to the this much. But when this liquid plus out this much, half of the this K distance to be moved like because volume is different. That means we are discussing about the movement of the our solvent. Understand? So how fast the movement of the solvent, how slow the movement of the solvent, it depends upon the volume of the solution. Therefore, we cannot neglect our volume of the solution. Here, I remember the flow of the solvent, the flow of the solvent also depends on the temperature, you know. See, movement of the temperature, movement of the our solvent, it's always increased. Okay, when temperature increases, that means number one, flow of the solvent. Flow of the solvent, what it depends on temperature. Right? When temperature increases, flow of the solvent will increase. When the volume increases, when the volume of the solution increases, then definitely flow of the solvent also will increase. That means osmosis will increase. When osmosis increase, the I mean the pressure developed on the concentration side will also be increased. Right? That means here, so these two factors are very important. Here, don't forget. Now, so this osmotic pressure I write P or capital P, right? Capital P. Therefore, this osmotic pressure, that means the extra pressure developed on the higher concentration side. So, that depends on, okay, so temperature. And now, when we are talking about the volume, okay, when we are talking about the volume, when the volume is in, but how much we add a solute, how much we add a solute, so that also more important. So, in order to understand about the volume increase, volume decrease, so we cannot neglect our concentration. So the concentration terms related to the volume, that is what we call the molar concentration. This is the our parent sheet. Now here, this foot collective property, I mean the osmotic pressure, is something different from the our first three collective property. That means, so in this case, the osmosis here it depends on the molar concentration, not molarity. And another difference is this collective property is depends on the temperature. Yes, we discussed at the time of the temperature, at the time also the temperature in the boiling point, temperature in the freezing point. But we don't just have any relation between the temperature on such a collective property. 
and here is the polymeric property related to the temperature and another concept is the molar concentration. Oh, all right. So when we have the, our K complete equation, so we can find that osmotic pressure is equal to CRT. So this is the temperature, C is the molar concentration. Here is the one more constant. Here is that. That is the R. What is the R? That is the solution constant. This solution constant value okay, is always the fixed constant value is always fixed. So this solution constant value K that is exactly equal to the our K value of the gas constant. How much the gas constant that is 0 0.0832 a liter atmosphere per mole per Kelvin. This is the value of the R we are using here. Now here, this molar concentration, when we do it here, so this molar concentration, we can have the, what is the mathematical definition we found at the time of the, our concentration time. That is the molar concentration. So we can have like this, number of the moles divided by volume, we can put it here, that is the PV is equal to NRT, right? And when we have the N, what is the N here? That is the mass divided by molecular mass. So we can put here PV is equal to W by M RT. So this is the our, our different okay osmotic pressure. When we require, we can use what we get in the task avalanche. In the our diamond okay, so here the parameters weight mass of the our solute and molecular mass R constant given here T is the our temperature and T is the osmotic pressure. But in some cases, the volumes okay, if the volumes given, if the volume given, this volume it must be always in one liter to be calculated. If the volume of the our solution is less than one liter, so it will be converted into one liter. Suppose the volume of the solution is given here, volume is 100 mm. So this 100 mm we have to calculate in the calculation, so it should be one liter. That means 100 divided by 1000, so it will be 0.1 liter. So we have to do it like that, understand? Now, so when we have the okay, calculation, so we okay, don't forget this type of okay, mathematical relation. No, here. So one of the most important application of the, our osmotic pressure is that see you know semi-permeable membrane. Semi-permeable membrane. So this is a very special membrane, and their pore size is too small compared to the our filter paper. You know filter paper. Okay, what's the purpose of the filter paper? You know that we just precipitate out. I mean, we just take out some solid mass. So by using filtering, by doing filtration, right? So the solid mass substance we just take out, and the liquid mass that means liquids we can collect it from the other side, right? So that's what we call the filtration. But since the, our solute, I mean the solid mass is the bigger in size, therefore it can be collected very easily using the filter paper, right? But if the, our solid mass is very comparatively too small, so that filter paper may not be applicable, right? So that one can be just fine past it, right? So but, so our the substance like the molecules, right? Their molecule size, some are big, some are small. Some are big and some are small. So suppose this is the whole pore size of the our semi-permeable membrane. This is the pore size of the our semi-permeable membrane. Right? Okay. So when we are determining the how much size of this molecule, that means molecular size. Molecular size. Okay, so how big this molecule, that means molecular size. If we know how big that molecule, so what is the mass of that molecule means molecular mass. Right? So the bigger mass we can filter out very easily using the semi parameter because the solvent molecules can pass through it very easily through this pore. But only this much size of the our molecule K 
cannot move this side. So it will be given here the solute. Right? So if the our solute substance remain here, we can collect very easily that solute we can collect. After we can collect then how big the molecule and what should be the molecular mass of that solute we can calculate, we can determine very easily. Therefore, this osmotic pressure is the one of the best method, is the one of the best technique to determine the molecular mass of this some molecule in bigger size. Say for example, protein, right, and polymer, polymer, okay, so these types of the okay, substances, these types of the organic substances are in, okay, bigger in size, are bigger in size, right, that means large molecular mass. So when we do calculate the molecular mass of the macro Okay, molecules like the protein, like polymer. So the best technique is our osmotic pressure. So this is the only the logical idea which can be applied in our mind, in our knowledge, because this molecular size it cannot be passing through this semi-permeable membrane. So we cannot use in the place of the semi-permeable membrane. We cannot use the filter paper. So because filter paper, you know, it can allow to flow this type of the molecular size. Therefore, semi-permeable membrane is the one of the very special membrane which can okay allow to flow the solvent, not allow to flow the our solid particles. Understand? No, this must our quality properties. We must understand. So by go through my key this class, I hope you can understand. What is the importance of the our chemistry behind quality properties, right? So please enjoy it and just keep watch the my game video. Thank you.